ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد ان شاء الله سبحانه وتعالى in today's talk i'll speak about salat al istikhara and um, as brother ertiza mentioned the um, concerning speaking about salat al istikhara we always think about when we think about istikhara it's always like about marriage and so and any any lecture or any topic that has marriage in it inshallah you get people's attention but there are two main topics that will always get people's attention marriage and jinn so the third to- i mean so i think we should have another a third topic that will keep everybody awake which is jinn marriage so you combine the two goods inshallah so باذن الله سبحانه وتعالى um with salat al istikhara there are so many misconceptions um concerning how to pray it when to pray it how many times to pray this particular prayer and it's so impo- but it so important but there are so many um misconceptions and misunderstandings concerning salat al istikhara and in islam when we ever when we make decisions and everything that we do we always return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if we put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of everything last night for those who attended the program at al huda Sheikh Muhammad Sharif he mentioned about going through life with a GPS if you had a GPS system you every, every time you get lost it would tell you like off route off route reroute rerouting or something like that you got to go to the left or to the right and so forth if there was ever a gps system islamic gps system for your lives is salat al istikhara because salat al istikhara is divine guidance from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so maybe the more appropriate topic or the title of this the islam instead of the divine compass is the divine gps inshallah subhanahu maybe the next time we'll 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 we'll, we'll entitle it that way because when you put your trust in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask him for guidance and if you are sincere in that in that aspect then inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have a great tool imagine every decision that you make inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always be the best for you how many decisions have we made in the past that we now regret how many decisions just think about the decisions that we have made that we actually have regretted doing or um following now think did we pray istikhara when we made those decisions if we prayed istikhara when we made those decisions we will never regret because there will be divine guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he'll guide us to that which is more appropriate and that which is best and so that is why the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught istikhara to the companions just like he taught the ayat of the quran because of its significance and because of its importance also and in this world in this society in general and every society there are ways in which people make decisions sometimes people make decisions according the, to the um their signs you know as astrological signs if they're pisces or aries or whatever it is and then they read these um uh, these things that people write 
on the newspapers, and sometimes they make decisions off of that. And these people who are writing that, writing these things, they don't even know anything. It's just to them, they're just writing anything that they uh, feel that might be general fit, uh, fit the general public, and it's just pretty much there's nothing uh, firm or principles that they base their writings and so forth on. And some people, they make their decisions, like some Muslims, um, they make the decisions, they say, they'll use the musabbaha, do the tasbih, you know, we say subhanallah, they'll use that, I would do it, I should, I, do, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, I shouldn't. And then in America, of course, you get the rose paddle, right? You say, he loves me, he loves me not, he loves me, and he loves me not, and so forth. He doesn't like me, uh-oh, I don't think I should get married to this particular person. So people make decisions different way. And all of these decisions, all these methods and ways that people use to make decisions, they're just trivial. They're just, they are of no basis, no benefit whatsoever. And how can, you, we ourselves are humans, and we're putting our trust in these pedals. I mean, that's, it doesn't even make sense logically or by reason. It doesn't even make sense at all. And the Arabs, they used to do the same thing. They used to do what's called Aslam. And they used to pick, the they used to use divination with arrows and they used to pick such and such if they had the long arrow or the short arrow or the short stick or the long stick they would travel or not travel and sometimes they would wait and wait for signs so if a bird was traveling or a black bird or a crow or something like that was traveling and if they saw it flying the first bird that they saw flying towards the east or towards the west or north or south or whatever it is they would they would base their decisions on whether to travel or whether they get married or whether to start a business or so forth on these birds, like the flights or the way or uh, the direction of the flights of these birds. And of course Islam, when Islam came, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade all of that. Allah subhanahu says in Surah Al-Ma'idah, حُرِّمَتْ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَةُ وَالْدَّمُ وَلَحْمَ الْخِنْزِيرِ وَمَا أُحِلَّ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ بِهِ Allah subhanahu says, haram for you are the meats of animals that haven't been slaughtered Islamically, and then blood and the the lahm al khinzir, the swine, uh, and also in the end after that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions wa antastaqsimu bil azlam, and that you use divinations with arrows. Thatikum fisq. Indeed, that is that is indeed a transgression and a great sin. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also said uh, in the Sahih, in Sahih Bukhari. In the hadith which is Sahih, when the Prophet ﷺ went into the Kaaba and he saw that there there was a picture of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail, and in their hands were these arrows that they used to use to de decide matters. And the Prophet ﷺ says, "Qatalahum Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa taala destroy them." لَقَدْ عَلِمُوا أَنَّهُمْ لَمْ يَسْتَقْسِمَ بِهَا أَبَدًا. They indeed knew that Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail they never used these methods. They never used divinations with arrows and so forth. And the Prophet ﷺ said, "لَا يَلِجَ الدَّرَجَاتِ الْعُلَى مَنْ تَكَهَنَ أَوْ اسْتَقْسَمَ أَوْ رَجَعَ مِنْ سَفَرٍ تَطَيُّرًا." A person will not reach the highest level. In other words, he will not enter paradise if um, will not reach the high, higher levels of par reach level of par levels of paradise if he goes and does fortune telling or practices fortune telling or um, or uses these methods like divination with arrows and so forth or if he sees a bird flying uh, and so forth and he goes back and he doesn't travel because of that because of these these signs and so forth. So this is not part of Islam and Islam Islam teaches to just solely put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the well, another method, one of the things that can be put together with istikhara is istishara. Istishara is consultation. You consult with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you consult with your Muslim brothers and your Muslim sisters if you are going to decide in an affair. And if somebody asks you for an advice, then it becomes something of an obligation upon you to advise them if you know it. The Prophet ﷺ said, Haqq al-Muslim ala al-Muslim sit. The rights of a Muslim upon another Muslim is six. And one of which, one of which he said, إِذَا اسْتَنْصَحَكَ فَانْصَحُ 
If he asks you for advice, then give him advice. So consultation and giving each other advices when making decisions is also a part of Islam. And of course our deen is based upon nasiha. Our deen is based upon nasiha. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he, um, you know, some of the, the scholars have mentioned. Yeah, they said, مَا نَدِمَ مَنْ اسْتَخَارَ الْخَالِقِ وَشَاوَرَ الْمَخْلُوقِينَ A person will never regret if he prays istikhara, if he consults or prays istikhara and asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for the best, and he consults with the people. So there are two things, you have to pray istikhara and consult. You can do either one, one, one or the other first, it doesn't really uh, matter. The scholars have mentioned you can ask, for advice and then pray istikhara or you can pray istikhara and ask for advice either way and after that inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala you should just go forward with it and you know when we pray istikhara when we pray istikhara you only are allowed to pray istikhara on affairs or on matters that are allowable so you can't pray istikhara on affairs that are haram because you're not supposed to do them anyways like for example, if somebody wants to go, he's about to go to Las Vegas, he, he's, he, he's deciding on whether to go gambling in Las Vegas or not. He goes, let me pray istikhara, should I go or not? You don't have to pray istikhara on things that are haram. Because they're haram and you're not supposed to do them to start with. So you only pray istikhara on things that are mubah, or things that are makruh. Things that are disliked, and things that are makruh. Those matters, you don't pray istikhara on whether to do them or to leave them. And you do not pray istikhara on things that are obligatory. Let's say for example, um, you owe somebody money, and you know you have to pay them back. So, should I pay this person back or not? Let me pray istikhara. No, you owe them, it's obligatory upon you to pay. Or should I pray or shouldn't I pray? Should I fast or shouldn't I fast? You don't pray istikhara on those matters, because they are obligatory upon you. And you have to pray, you have to do them. And also on the things that are recommended. If they're sunnah, you should always do them. If they are sunnah, you should always do them, and you don't really, you don't need to pray istikhara in that matter. But if there are two things um, that are considered mubah, meaning you're allowed to do them, whether you do them or not, or whether you leave that particular matter or do that particular matter, it's permissible for you either way. So in these affairs, that's when it's permissible, and that's when you should pray al istikhara. And when you when we pray, so. When we pray istikhara, for example, you know, getting married to this person or that person, or whether you should get married uh, uh, right now, or continue your studies and so forth, uh, these affairs, you consult with those of knowledge. And when you consult, consult with people who have experience, or consult with people who have previous, uh, previous experience, or they have knowledge, or they're specialized in that particular matter, or that particular affair. And so consulting with the people, and then praying istikhara, if you do these two things insha'Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will never regret if you start uh, when, when you make those decisions. And with the istikhara, another thing is when do you, when do you say the istikhara, and when do you say the dua al-istikhara, and how you say them. And to get the answer to this question, we have to read the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Jabir ibn Abdullahi radiallahu anhu in which he said كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ يُعَلِّمُنَا الْإِسْتِخَارَ فِي الْأُمُورِ كُلِّهَا كَمَا يُعَلِّمُنَا السُّورَةَ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to teach us al-istikhara in all our affairs just like he taught us the Qur'an just like he taught us the Qur'an and some of the scholars have said what does this word just like mean? Is it just like meaning because of its importance? Yes, some of the scholars have said it's because of its importance. Others have said it's because you say the Prophet used to teach the dua just like he taught the Quran because he used to teach them word by word. He would say, read, say, recite this, and so the companions will recite them. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best when we read this particular hadith, when the Prophet said he used to teach them just like the surah of the Quran, it's because of the Qur'an is being read, the Qur'an is something that you read all the time. Whereas Muslims, practicing Muslims, it's something that we always should be reading. And thus, istikhara is something that we are always in need of. 
every we have decisions to make all the time. And sometimes we regret our decisions because we don't pray istikhara. And istikhara isn't just for marriage. It isn't just, most people think it's just for marriage, or starting a business and so forth. No, it's for it, any affair that you have doubts in, and you don't know which one to decide. For example, you know, we have a lot of us, right? A lot of us, we are always regretful of the phone plan that we choose, right? Or the phone company. Should I pick Sprint, T-Mobile, or whatever? Right? Later on, they start charging you all this money and so forth. SubhanAllah, maybe we prayed this and at that time, we would have chose the right plan. With the right minutes and the right company that doesn't like to steal our money all the time. So even in these affairs, and you can pray istikhara because you don't know what to decide upon. And if this is a this is if we pray istikhara, inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will have this divine compass and divine GPS which will guide you. And when we read more about istikhara, inshallah, we will see. Of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then said, "إذا هم أحدكم بالأمر فليركع ركعتين من غير غير الفريضة." He said, "If one of you هم, if one of you wants to do something, then let him make two two rakas of um, two rakas of Sunnah prayers besides the obligatory prayers. So you pray Sunnah prayers uh, and." Two rak'ahs of sunnah prayers, and then you make the istikhara, and some of the scholars have said you should make the istikhara inside the prayer before you get the taslim, and others have said you can say it afterwards, in other words, after the taslim, you say, Salamu alaykum, afterwards you can make istikhara. And so, when the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا هَمَّ أَحَدُكُمْ بِالْأَمْرِ When one of you wants or has a desire or he wants to do something, and he's undecided, now, in the hadith, it says that the Prophet ﷺ taught al-istikhara fil umuri kulliha in all the affairs. But we mentioned that not every single thing, like all the obligatory matters and so forth, we don't have to pray istikhara for. And also the, you know, the, the matters that are very trivial, very trivial, just the normal things, we don't need to pray istikhara for. Like for example, uh, should I make steak today or should I make spaghetti? I mean, these are like little things that are not really trivial, you know, this trivial little little things, you don't really have to pray istikhara for them. Anything that will, maybe by by making them, it will, it, will, it, has, it has a lot of effect in your life and so forth, then maybe you can pray istikhara for it. But these, these little things about eating and drinking and so forth, um, you don't really have to pray istikhara for them. Wallahu ta'ala alam. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَلْيَرْكَعَ رَكْعَتَيْنِ مِنْ غَيْرِ الْفَرِيضَ And then let him make two rak'ahs, of sunnah prayers, meaning not obligatory prayers. And so if a person prays after prayer, if he makes his dua, this dua, this particular dua after, if he makes this particular dua after the taslim, if he wants to, he can raise his hands. If he wants to, he can raise his hands and make dua. If he makes it inside the prayer before the taslim, he makes it when he finishes the tashahud and the salat al ibrahimiyah then he makes the salat al istikhara and afterwards the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said thumma liyaqul thumma liyaqul allahumma inni astakhiruka bi ilmika wa astaqdiruka bi qudratik and afterwards when you pray your two rak'ahs and another matter is that, another thing is when you pray your two rak'ahs the majority of the scholars are of the opinion that you don't pray in the times that prayer is forbidden so you don't pray, for example, istikhara if it's after, uh, if it's after fajr prayer or after asr prayer or any times in which prayers are forbidden that you don't pray istikhara. And even the Shafi'i scholars, the Shafi'i scholars are of the opinion that if there's a reason for you to pray sunnas, even in the times in when you don't pray, uh, when you're not allowed to pray, then you can pray if there's a reason. But they decide, they divided their reasons into three types. The reasons and the asbab are divided into three categories and three types. The first is the asbab which is previous to that particular matter, which comes before that particular matter. For example, when the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا دَخْلَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَسْجِدِ فَلَا يَجْلِسْ حَتَّى يُصَلِيَ رَكْعَتَيْنِ When one of you enters the masjid, then let him not sit down until he prays two rak'ah first, rak'ahs first. So if that matter, if that particular uh, action comes before the Salat al-Istikhara, of course even the Shafi'i scholars, they, they say you should, or it comes before that uh, Salat uh, in the times that were forbidden, then 
you, for them, you should pray. Of course, majority of the scholars say you don't pray. Now in the middle, if it, sometimes, sometimes, the reasons come at the same time, like Salatul Khusuf, the eclipse prayer. So eclipse is happening and you're praying at the same time. And then sometimes, the action follows the prayer. So the scholars have said, if the action follows the prayer, then you don't pray, uh, even the Shafi'i scholars have mentioned this, you don't pray the Salatul Istikhara. You don't pray the Salatul Istikhara, even if it's, uh, if it's in the time when it's forbidden. Because the action in which you are going to do is after, not before the prayer. So if it's before, then there's a difference of opinion, but after. So in general, the majority of the scholars are of the opinion that you don't pray after Asr, you don't pray after Fajr, when you pray Salat al-Istikhara. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and then say these words, Allahumma inni astakhiruka bi'ilmika. Oh Allah, I seek consultation with, um, astakhiruka means to seek consultation or decisions that you are going to make with your knowledge, فَإِنَّكَ تَعْلَمْ وَلَا أَعْلَمْ Because you know, O oh Allah, and I do not know. And وَأَسْتَقْدِرُكَ بِقُدْرَتِكَ And I ask for that you give me the ability and give me the strength to go forward with it by your strength. In other words, because we say that there's no strength and no might except from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we say, وَأَسْأَلُكَ مِنْ فَضْلِكَ الْعَظِيمِ And I ask you from your great generosity or your great um, favors. فَإِنَّكَ تَقْدِرُ وَلَا أَقْدِرُ وَتَعْلَمُ وَلَا أَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتَ أَعْلَامُ الْغُيُوبِ And indeed you are the all-knowing. You are the knower of the unseen. And Allah subhanahu wa knows the unseen. And part of the unseen, one of the knowledges of the unseen is something that is in the future. So anything in the future, Allah subhanahu wa knows better than us. And so that's why we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and show us the straight path and the way that will be most beneficial for us in this life and in the hereafter. And because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone knows the unseen and He alone knows the future and knows what we will, what will happen if we chose a particular decision. And then we say, oh, Allahumma in kunta ta'lam anna hadha al-amr. He said, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, and then say, Oh Allah, if you know that this particular affair, and then in this area you mention that affair, or you mention that particular uh, deed that you want to do or not. So in this area you would say, Oh Allah, if marriage to so and so is better, or going to tra or traveling or starting this business is better, then you say, خَيْرًا لِي فِي دِينِي وَمَعَاشِي It's better for me in this life and then hereafter, in my livelihood. وَأَقِبَةِ أَمْرِي and also in the final affairs, in the end, it will be it will always be better for me. Uh, better for me. Fakdurhuli. Then make it easy. Make it. Fakdurhuli um, means make it possible for me. Make it possible for me. Thumma barik wa And then make it easy for me also. So make it possible for me. Wa yasirhuli. Thumma barik lifi. And then give me baraka in it. Give me blessings in it. Because Anything that we do, if we, there's no blessing, then there will be no good in it whatsoever. But if there's blessing in it, there will be continual goodness. There will be continual goodness. And this is the meaning of barakah. It's continual goodness. And it's goodness that's, that will always be there and from all, from all aspects it will always be good for you. And then after that, we say that, Oh Allah, if this particular affair is bad for me, if it's not good for me, then take me away from it and take it away from me. And, uh, and then we say, Oh Allah, make possible for me all the good that is possible. And then make me pleased with the decision you have given to me or that you have chose for me, chosen for me. So when we pray this istikhara, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for us to choose the right path or to choose the right way. And from this, from the words of, of Salat al-Istikhara, the scholars have said that once you make it, how many times do you pray it first of all? First of all? Some, there's narrations that you should pray it seven times, but most of the narrations are, as mentioned by Ibn Hajr al-Asqalani, these narrations are weak narrations and they cannot be the basis of this, of, of that. So, the, the time that you pray it, you should pray it, actually, some of the scholars have said you should pray it just one time. 
Just pray it and make your decision. Pray it and then make your decision. Make the decision according to what you think is best for you in this life and the hereafter. And even if you made the wrong decision, even if you made the wrong decision, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide you to the right one. Let's say for example, you wanted to marry this particular brother or the particular sister. And you really wanted to marry her and you prayed istikhara. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely to guide you to that which is best for you. And then of course you saw her beauty or saw his uh, so and so and then you wanted to marry that particular person. And you chose that decision. And so you went forward with it. Now let's say if by marrying that person, in the end it will be bad for your deen. It will not be good for you. If that is going to be the case, even if you went forward with it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take her away. Something will happen that will cause that particular engagement or particular uh, marriage before it happens. It will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take it and not allow you to marry that person. So something will happen. Because why? Because we say, Oh Allah, if this particular affair is not good for me in this life or in the hereafter, فَصْرِفُ عَنِّي Take it away from me. Keep it far away from me. وَصْرِفْنِي عَنْهُ You can keep me far away from it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take you away from it. So from this hadith, when you pray, when you pray it's the the understanding from it is, as soon as you finish praying, inshaAllah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just make your decision because you have already put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, as I mentioned, uh, if you haven't consulted with people yet, then consult with them. Maybe you, you might have made a decision to do such and such action. But then after consulting, that brother changed your mind or that sister changed your mind. That consultation is part of the istikhara. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you consult this particular person. And, and uh, you know, this person told you not to do so. Such and such action. And thus that would be part of the istikhara. That would be part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guiding you away from that particular affair or guiding you closer to a particular affair. And thus, if we pray istikhara, I mean, just go for it and just put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sometimes there are times in which we are, are not able to pray istikhara. Sometimes we're not able to pray istikhara because like for, for example for a woman, for a woman, she might be in her menses. And if she's in her menses, she cannot pray. And thus, if this is the case, some of the, the, the scholars have mentioned that if she can, if the, deci deci the decision can wait, then she can wait until she is able to pray and then she can pray the istikhara. And if the decision, if she has to make the decision, if it's something that she has to make immediately and they don't have time to do it, uh, that particular, you don't have time to decide and you only have maybe one day or a few hours, then just make a dua. Say the istikhara without the prayer. Because the istikhara itself is the dua. And the reason why we pray, some of the scholars, one of the wisdoms of why we pray and then we make this dua, because, you know, by praying it opens up the doors of the heavens for us. And then after that we make the dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the dua al-istikhara. And after making dua al-istikhara, you have to have in your heart the certainty, the yaqeen, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide you to that which is best. Have that certainty, have that belief in your heart, that Allah will guide that which is best for you. Because that's part of Iman. And if you have that certainty, inshaAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide you. And, and He will make you choose the correct decision, inshaAllah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, Salat al-Istikhara can be prayed, um, as I mentioned, anytime. And after prayer, of course, if you memorize the Salat al-Istikhara, the dua of Istikhara, it is better for you. This is something that every Muslim should do. You have to memorize it. And if you, but if you don't memorize it, you can read from, piece of, from a piece of paper. You can read and make dua from that paper after you pray. Just hold up the piece of paper and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by reading from the paper. And that's also permissible. And when we pray istikhara, there's another misconception that people have. They think that you have to see a dream. Or you have to pray three times or four times. Oh, if you, if you see this particular dream, 
inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala just go for it if you don't see a dream keep on praying and some people they even you know I heard of a brother he said he prayed he prays istikhara and before he goes to sleep he puts two pieces of paper under his uh, under his uh, pillow do don't do <laughs> after he prays istikhara he goes to sleep he wakes up in the morning and he picks out one he takes out one of these papers do or not do if it says do then he'll do it Without any any thinking whatsoever, and this is the same as somebody almost almost similar to those people who do you know who pick lots and so forth. You don't really have to do that. Just make your decision, whatever you think. But you have to be sincere in your heart and make the decision that you think will be best for you in this life and in the hereafter. You know, sometimes you have a very strong inclination towards this particular decision. You really want it. Let's say you really want this, you want to marry this particular sister or this particular brother. But you know, they don't really have good manners or their, their deen isn't very strong and so forth. But man, she's beautiful. Right? And like you have this, that strong inclination towards that particular area. So, but you know yourself, you know, like, you know, subhanAllah, if I get married to her, I don't think it would be good for my deen. So you already know in your heart that, you know, in your heart that, you know, actually not marrying her or uh, marrying them, not marrying that particular person is better for you, for your deen. So pick that one and be sincere. So no, and that's what Imam al nawawi said, he mentioned that when you pray istikhara, just be sincere and first just pick the decision you think will be best for you in this life and in the hereafter. And sometimes, you know, you, you'll be inclined to making a certain decision and afterwards, after praying istikhara, you see the opposite. And of course, this is uh, inshaAllah subhanahu wa from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you don't have to wait for a dream. You don't have to wait for somebody else's dream. Sometimes we go, oh, mother, did you, you, you wake up in the morning, mother, did you see any dream? You ask your dad, you ask your sister, does anybody see a dream about this decision that I'm going to make or not? No. You don't have to wait for that. You just go forward with it and put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of the scholars have said that, you know, you should repeat the istikhara, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best that you don't really have to repeat the istikhara. Just make istikhara and put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and go for it. Now, when making istikhara also, um, when we make, when we make salat al-istikhara, we pray the istikhara prayer and we have, some of the scholars have mentioned you have to have the intention of the istikhara before, before you pray that particular sunnah. And it could be combined with another sunnah. Like for example, let's say you're going to the masjid and you're about to enter the masjid. So you can combine your salat, tahiyyat al masjid, let's say the reading of the masjid with the salat al istikhara, with salat al istikhara. So when you're praying the Hayat al-Masjid, you have the same intent, you have, you have the intention that afterwards, or at the end of that prayer, you will make it an istikhara prayer and a Tahiyat al-Masjid prayer. Or you can make it maybe a Witr prayer in the middle, you know, the two rakahs before you pray the final rakah, or any sunnah prayers, you can combine uh, with them. Uh, Wallahu ta'ala alam. So, but you have to have this particular intention before. And some scholars have said you don't even have to have it as long as it's a sunnah prayer. After each sunnah prayer, you can just make uh, al istikhara. And so, when we're buying anything, again, next time when you go buy a car, you know, car is something that, especially buying used cars, right? When I mean, you know the new cars that have these guarantees, so it's a little more. But you still should pray istikhara because you have to choose which car is better and so forth, right? But especially buying used cars. When you pray istikhara, maybe that person might not tell you that there's faults with that car or there are defects in the engine or somewhere else. And then later on you drive it for two or three months and you find out, well, there's a, like the transmission was about to be blown or something like that. But if you were to pray istikhara, inshaAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what you will, will allow or will, will choose for you, will choose for you inshaAllah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will help you in that particular decision. And if you're in the in the mall or in the if you're buying something, because sometimes there's no pla no time or sometimes there's no place, but you need to buy. You're not gonna you know you don't want to go back home. Let's say you're at the mall already and you don't know if you should buy this or that. And it's something very important for you. It's something good. But if you're buying something that's haram, for example, you don't pray istikhara on that. Should I buy a TV or not? You know the TV is bad, so you put it aside. You don't have to pray istikhara for that. 
And so you can actually just make the dua if you don't have the time or the place to pray. And your time frame for making that decision is very limited. So you just make the dua right there. Just face the qibla. If you want, you can raise your hand and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, with the dua al-istikhara, inshaAllah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, inshaAllah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we mentioned, that istikhara prayer, um, if a person uh, prays istikhara, inshaAllah, this is something that helps you also to increase your iman and belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So anything that happens to you, sometimes immediately you might make that a particular decision. You might have made that particular decision. And you know your heart, like you feel like, oh, I should have made the other one and so forth. This part of istikhara is that you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you pleased with a particular decision. And sometimes, and sometimes, that decision that you are making, that you have just made, you might think that it's bad for you. And there are so many bad things that are happening to you. you now there are so many things that are happening to you, and you might think that it's bad for you. And you might not realize that it's actually good for you until maybe 10 years from now. Maybe 5 or 6 or 7 or seven years from now, that you'll realize that it's good for you. You know, like for example, I've just given inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, with a personal example in my own life. Um, when I graduated, after graduating from Medina, I actually, I never even thought about going to Cambodia or Vietnam. I never even thought about Cambodia or Vietnam. But, you know, one of, the, one of my teachers, he told, he told me, he said, you know, you actually should go there because the people are really in need. And you know, growing up in America, and you're going to go to Cambodia. And you know, it's like total opposite. There's no water. There's no electricity. And there are no roads, hardly any roads, it's dusty. No telephone. I mean, you're going to the, you, I used to call it Akhir Dunya. This is the end of the world. If this is not the end of the world, then there's no end to this world. This is it. This is it. There's nothing after this. You just look and you know, there's nothing after it. And, I mean, who would go there, you know? <laughs> like, leave all this and you just go there. And, you know, really, I really didn't want to go. But I said, inshallah, let me just pray Sikhara, should I go or not? And when I prayed the Sikhara, it just came upon me and said, no, this is something that's obligatory upon me. I have to go. And so I went. You know, I went. And alhamdulillah, when I went, I, mashallah, you know, it's like, I learned so much from it. I learned so much from it. I even got married from there, so. <laughs> and alhamdulillah, even though I don't have my wife with me, even all the problems that, I, that, that have occurred and so forth, after, and you know, just... After 10 years, you know, even there were so many problems that happened also, but after 10 years, you say, Subhan, Alhamdulillah, that was the best decision ever. That was it, that decision. Even though at the beginning, I didn't even want to go really. You know, it was like 90-10. But I just prayed it, and then afterwards, it was like the opposite. It was 90-10 the other way that I had to go. Like immediately after I put my hands down, it was like that, that's it, I have to do this. So, and then subhanAllah, you know, during the middle, you start thinking, man, was that really the right decision? Because <laughs> it's really difficult. <laughs> but at the end, subhanAllah, you learn so much from it, that you say, alhamdulillah, and so many things happen because of it, you say, alhamdulillah, that I win. So, you know, the istikhara prayer, you might not realize that it was good for you, until maybe in the end. And in the end, you might not even realize that it will be good for you, until you enter Jannah. Say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, I made this particular decision because it was good for me. All those trials and tribulations and so forth, I am getting it right now. And I wish more of that happened. Like all these trials and tribulations, more of that would have, would have happened in this life because of the reward that you are getting, inshaAllah. So pray istikhara. Ma nadi ma man istikhara wa istashara. You will never regret if you pray istikhara and you consult. وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم